And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the Wake In Podcast. We got so much to talk about. My man, Josh Thompson, is back from Hollywood, Florida. No one is back from Perth, Australia. They are stuck there for a while, but the UFC had a fantastic show there. Also, we're going to talk about the PFL, the playoffs. We're going to talk about Mr. DDP, and I'm not talking about Dallas Diamond Page. I'm talking about Drickus Duplessis and a fantastic performance by both him and Israel Adesanya, fantastic fight, my man Josh. How you feeling, baby? You, are you are you a little bit little bit tired? No. Yeah, I'm a little bit tired. I flew into <laughs> uh, to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for the Hollywood PFL fights. Did some behind the scene footage for the uh, fighters there. Picked a handful of guys. Man, had a great time. We uh, we got some good morning stuff on fight day. We got some good afternoon stuff, like the you know the shakeouts. We got we got some lunch. We got some rides in the bus. We got great content for them. You know, and uh, it was good, man. I had a great time. It was it was uh, something different than sitting directly in front of the camera in a monkey suit, just with a suit and tie, in a monkey suit. and just going, "Man, this sucks." You know, like I love I love doing the death segments. You know, uh, for Bellator when I was working for you know PFL and Weather Strike Force and all the other ones that I've ever done death stuff with. I love it. I don't mind putting on a suit on, but I got to be honest, man. This felt kind of good. I was just wearing nice casual clothes, hanging out with the boys. Having breakfast, having lunch, it was awesome. We just chill. You know what? You know what's not awesome, and yeah. I'm serious about this. When you sit there and you you text your friend, you say, "Hey, dude, man, are you in Florida, right?" Yeah. And you get this stupid video. That's so great of a camera. <laughs> You're filming a camera and a cameraman. Yes. Nothing. No sound. Nothing yeah. really going on with anything. It's no. not like it. But then you put a little music to it. Yeah. And I'm like, my friend is retarded. But well, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it was. It, I, I figured you. you what did you, did you think it was artsy? Yeah, I thought it kind of was. Okay, I was All like right. an abstract art of me. I was using a camera to film directly into a camera. I thought it was pretty I, cool. I kind of figured that out as I'm looking at it. I go, he's 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 retarded. <laughs> <laughs> that, we got a friend from Boston. He's like, yeah, yeah, fucking retard. Yeah, <laughs> That's all retard. he does. Yeah, and he, he's just funny. he's an old hockey player, and he's just like, bro, we were young. He's like, we would throw that That's word the around. Only, That's like, the only, the only word we use. That's my wife, my wife, my wife will listen to this probably and go, "What the?" She'll hit me. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> you know it's, what? I mean, I gotta it's be a, honest, man. I'm it's a word that. of endearment yeah. to me. Yes, yeah. Some people, it man. Is. Some no, people it is that way. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I mean, Josh, you're my retard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, you've been mine for a couple of years now. There you go. See? <laughs> oh, man. But look, I had a great time, man. Tef, I basically flew in late Thursday night, did the show Friday. My flight was delayed three hours on the tarmac on Thursday night. I didn't that get sucks. in until 2.30 in the morning. Had an 8 a.m. call time to meet up with the, the producers, and we kind of went through the, the flow of the day and the setup, and um, that sucked. And then I got done with the event, the event last night. We got done wrapped probably around 10 o'clock. But then uh, I was in the ho- I was in the casino, the Hollywood Hard Rock Casino. With walked, Brendan Allen. And I walked <laughs> and right out, John. Turn. And I am sit- standing right there. And I'm watching two. I think his name's Tuco. Uh, it was named uh, something Tuco. Tuco? Yeah, Tuco was there. And Vittoria and him were face-to-face, squaring off. Getting look like they were getting ready to get after it. Vittoria's yelling. Tuco's just smiling and laughing. And it was like, you know, Tuco was like, ah, whatever. And then there was a little bit of a push and a, like a, a, sw- a swing and stuff. And then... The smallest dude in the whole damn casino in the lobby there, right as you walk into the venue, is Michael Johnson. And Michael Johnson <laughs> goes, everyone, just get back. And they get back. Everybody's like, they're all fans mainly, right? Everyone's like fans. Michael Johnson just steps in the middle and goes, everyone, get back. Get back. And people just spread like the fucking sea, like the fucking Red <laughs> Sea. And all of a sudden, you see Brennan Allen just walk right out of the back, like out of the, out of the locker room. And then you see Vittori step up, and they square it up, and Brennan Allen hits him with two bop, bop, yeah, right saw, hands. Dude, I saw him hit him with a two-piece. Yeah, just <laughs> boom, boom, right into the uh, roulette table. And then the, yep. you know, kind of some people kind of broke it up a little bit. But it was, it, was, uh, it was quick, and it was action-packed for that split second, man. I was like, what is going on? Oh, shit. 
Oh shit, they're really gonna fight. Then shoot, shoot, boom. Oh, oh they shit. are fighting. They are fighting. Why can't they fight like that in the cage? <laughs> like it was like, what do we what they like Brendan Allen wasn't pussyfooting around. He literally no, walked he, right out, put his hands up, moved his head offline, and just went right hand, right hand. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Vittori, I don't know if Vittori thought they were gonna talk and make up, you know, in the middle there, right before. He like, hey, they stepped out, but he know. was Brendan Allen wasn't having that shit. I, I, I saw a video of the, actually the whole thing. Yeah. Right. And I was like, well, that was very interesting. John, you know, I, I, I know that Brendan, right Al- Brendan Allen and Marvin Vittori are going to get a call from someone saying, hey, if you want to fight for free, you let me know. Oh, no, no. Da- <laughs> da- yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the Dana White, <laughs> Scott Coker approach. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Fight for free. Fucking, I can uh, just put oh, an organization hey, on. Yeah, man. I, I, dude, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'll put an organization yeah, a, on this, right now. This, this is a great idea. I, I just need you to fun. sign on the dotted line. I wonder if there is a, like, I wish, maybe I should start a promotion that does that. Just call it grudge matches. And just people, hey, two guys that want to fight, you, you guess you could do winner take all and just make it like a thousand bucks. Or just two call guys that winner, really winner take all of nothing. Yeah, That's nothing. good. <laughs> but I, I wonder if they would do it. Like, you know, two people hate each other. You know, they both want to fight each other. You could just find those guys. They don't have to be great fighters. They could be bums on the street, whatever. Well, they've had bum fights. Yeah, those were great. <laughs> those were fucking great. See, I remember. You do you see. remember the story behind those when they used to fucking give guys fucking uh, hamburgers from McDonald's? Hey, you, oh, yeah. I'll give you a hamburger. I'll give you a hamburger. You guys just fight. It was fight. fucking awesome, John. It was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of what helped YouTube blow up back then. That was like one of the things that helped YouTube blow uh, up. Oh, yeah. What do you got? It was all the fi- all about fights. Yeah, it, was, it is. It always is about fights. Mm-hmm. That's what we're revol- our worlds revolve around fights. So that's what, what. What else you got for us, George? What are you talking about? I saw you like oh, kind of grab. The I was mic just gonna say Sean set. Strickland would love to join the no pay fight squad. He would join it no. and admit it. No, oh, Sean Strickland. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I don't know. I think he's gotten a little bougie over the years. You know, he's he's got a little bit more bougie. I mean, he's the oh. guy. Like, yo, know, he was like, oh, I'm white trash. I'm this and that. Now I don't know if he'd step in the cage for any less than a couple. You know, like le- any less than a hundred. Did, did you see his whole thing with Tiki Goshen? Ooh, I don't. I don't know enough about it to get into it. But I'll man, tell you what, it's not looking good for I don't know who. But it's, hey. <laughs> If it's true, I, then it's I not can looking tell you. Good. If it's not true, it's. Uh, yeah, it's not I can true. tell you this. I know stories from the past. People don't want to go there. Yeah, like if, oof. Pe- people have done some dumb things. It's, just, it's like George is showing right there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, man. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I've known Tiki for a long time. I, I haven't really, I don't really know Sean, but I've known Tiki for a long time. I trained a lot with Rob McCullough when I trained over at yeah. uh, Ultimate Huntington Beach, Ultimate, Ultimate Huntington, whatever it was called. You know, um, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Just um, every time I've ever been around Tiki, he's always had a, a girlfriend. So I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's, Same with a girl. Yeah. Um, but John, uh, look at let's, let's, but let's go ahead and talk about George here for a split second. What happened, man? You got rid of the the ginger ninja uh, Muslim beard. What's going on, man? What's wrong? Am I not handsome? You're handsome oh, you as hell, handsome. brother. You, you look so handsome. look at that. Look at that shiny skin, man. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need no hairs on that. No, I was about to put some milk on there and let the kit cat lick it off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Me uh, and John do so. have the same chins, though. You. <laughs> John, John, oh, he just, man, bro, chin, he man. just, he just fucking yeah. really threw you under right there, bud. <laughs> the only difference is John's fucking almost eighty. You're what, twenty three, twenty five, twenty five. I lost two hundred pounds, so that's true. That's true, buddy. That's true. Feeling I, good. You just keep going, dude, brother. Sorry, I have a hard time losing fucking five pounds. This dude lost fucking two hundred. <laughs> Let me just do this to you, dude. You, you want think about this? Bow down, my man. He lost more than you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, an he entire did. human being. I've never weighed two hundred pounds in my life. The closest I ever got to that was my right after my freshman year of college wrestling. I just I tried to like just lift heavy, lift heavy, lift heavy, and I got up to one eighty nine. That's the heaviest I've ever been in my life. Heaviest. <sighs> Yeah, I had like no fucking neck. I was doing the towel neck things, you know, with the, uh, I saw, I think I saw, oh, yeah. I think it was Tyson I saw doing it, where you just put the towel and you bite it and you hang a weight from it. And just rah, rah, rah. 
Yeah, that's probably why my teeth got fucked up. <laughs> uh, all right, look, let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to go. Uh, let's talk UFC first. It just happened right now. It's fresh on all our right. minds. And then we'll talk PFL right after that. And then, uh, you know, we'll call it a wrap. But there is there is a I want to end the show with a little fun thing. So don't disappear after the PFL talk. There's a little fun thing I wanted to end the show with. But I thought it was a cool little video that I saw today uh, regarding like some uh, some some big John people, some big some some big size people i actually have a really good story to tell too about my boy dc so i'm just uh i'm gonna call him up and hit him i'm gonna ask i, I want i mean i gotta get permission from him to he talk. says some of the I dumbest things man but John, <laughs> look at I go, dc what did you just say everybody i know every even myself he says it to get a, a reaction he might and honestly i think it's the way he gets talked about so much like look you're here talking about it right now because he says dumb shit and <laughs> He, I think he sometimes he knows he's saying it, and then the, yeah. sometimes he doesn't. But he plays it off as if I knew that. Like I, I said that because I knew his, I knew someone would say For, it, it. It has nothing to do. I, I love the guy, but oh, sometimes you just, you just it's it's one of those you go. What did he just fucking DC's say? DC's great, man. He's, a, he's what did he just say? And then someone will repeat it. And you go. He didn't say that. Yeah. Yes, he did. He's a, he's a good dude. Like he's a dude. He's, oh, he's he's the dude. I talk with uh I talk with um. Uh, uh, Jordan Oliver this week and uh, did a lot Jordan's of Jordan's a good yeah, man, he, yeah. Jordan's uh, a good guy, like man. Jordan. So, yeah, good stuff, man. All right, hey, let's go ahead and jump into this card. Let's go right to the main event. All right, well, you had the champion DDP Drickus Duplessis going up against the former champion, two time former champion, trying to actually match up with Randy Couture as the only guy to get that title three times. And Israel Adesanya put on a hell of a performance. I thought he fought his ass off. I thought it was an entertaining fight from the beginning. You know, I thought uh, it was funny because I thought, you know, in the in the beginning of the first round, I looked at it. I thought Adesanya was doing well with his range. He was creating some problems for uh, Duplessis with his size and the, his length. And then Duplessis kind of took over a little bit and started landing some good shots. And by the end of it, I had Duplessis winning the, the first round. I had him also winning the second round. Obviously, I had uh, Adesanya winning the third round. So going into the fourth round, I had it. It was a close fight. You know, it was could have gone. Someone could have had it another way. I'm sure someone could have had the first round going to Adesanya. But I'll tell you what. There were some moments there. Adesanya took some shots. Duplessis took some shots. And I'll tell you, Duplessis got hit to the body so much by Adesanya that I was like, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. And it looked like it was. And he did exactly what I said. He looks exhausted and he starts to fight exhausted. Mm -hmm. The mother is tough as hell and he just keeps coming. And Adesanya made a mistake. And if you make a mistake, someone can capitalize on it. That's what happened. He got the choke. And my hat's off to him. I thought, he, you know, I, I did not truly pick. I said, this is even. And, and it really was, for the most part, the fight. It was back and forth. Both had their moments. Uh, but du you can tell that Duplessis is strong. He's got power when he hits someone. Mm -hmm. Because multiple times, he hurt Adesanya. He stung him. You could see it. And uh, there was one time that uh, they kind of said, oh, he's hurt. And it was like, no, he, just, he stepped on his foot. Yeah. You know, you can see where, you know, Adesanya got stuck in a position, but great fight. I just loved the fight. I thought it was action packed. I thought they were both going for it. You know, it's just one of those things when you have someone like an Adesanya that is, you know, he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys that the UFC loves him because he has fought his ass off for him. He's fought a ton. You know, you can you can take and look and say that, you know. You know, Poetan has basically taken over that spot and is is the guy that's now fighting all these fights. But, you know, he, there comes a point where you hit that meter where it's too many fights. And you really need some time to get away from the sport, get yourself back. And I thought he tried to do that with this one. And it was close, you know. It was a close fight. He almost won it, just not enough. Well, this main event coverage is brought to you by BetUS. And if you guys would have listened to me in the midweek show, you guys would have made some money because you guys would have cashed out. I said take Drickus. I would have said I said ground and pound, but I thought he'd get the fight to the ground. Ultimately, though, John, it comes down to 
I start questioning at this age at 35 if Izzy's chin is kind of gone. And the reason why I say that is Sean was able to hurt him in the first round. Yep. He's been in trouble before in some of his past fights. I mean, Alex obviously uh, finished him also, too, in the fifth round. I mean, yep. we saw it with Anderson Silva. And they're very <laughs> similar body styles, very similar fighting styles. Everything is pretty similar with the two of them. You got Anderson him, both the same weight class. It's almost like, look, they've done so much in the boxing world. They probably spar and train a lot of kickboxing and boxing, take down defense, keeping it on the feet. And ultimately, your chin eventually gets checked. And it just and once it goes a little bit, it just it seems like it's a snowball effect. And I'm not trying to take away from his performance tonight at all. I thought he fought a lot better than I thought he was going to fight. I'm a lot of people expected him to do really well. I thought he did well. I thought he did a lot better than I thought he was going to do coming back after that long layoff. I also thought exactly what I saw tonight was going to happen. I thought he would be dominant. I thought I thought he would do better in the first rounds. But as the fight went on, Adrikus sucked it up and still looked dog dead tired, but still came forward and Man. still put pressure. That that Izzy would I don't want to say fold, but it just you could tell he wasn't used to the the fight speed pace anymore. The real fight pace. Excuse me. He, he wasn't used to that. And he, you could tell after he would throw his one shot, two shot, and then he'd take a step back because you could tell he was tired, even though he wasn't trying to show it. He did even a better. He, but, you, but you looked at him when he was in the corner. I said the same thing coming into the fourth. I was like, man, you look tired and you don't look tired standing in your no. corner and he's talking. And he's yeah. he, and I was like, and Duplessis looked tired. You know, and he's, he's, his diaphragm's going. I'm like, damn. He was hunched over in the corner. I'll tell you. Oh, I was I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, but but you could tell that Drick is carrying I do, some. Go ahead. I do. I do think you're right. There comes a point, and it's not the shots that didn't buzz you before are now buzzing you. Yeah, I said you were right. Yes, I know. I was giving you the but, wink. Yeah, the, hey. the, but <laughs> it is. It's the shots that you know you used to be able to take, and they didn't. You didn't yeah. feel that buzz going down your spine. Now you do, and it starts to upset your balance, mm -hmm. and it starts to make you have to take steps back instead of going forward and i do think it just happens it's just part of being in the fight game you get hit enough eventually your body just doesn't take the same shots you know we've seen it with too many fighters you know chuck chuck liddell is one of yeah. the, the best examples of a guy that you know at one time you could hit chuck in the chin with a sledgehammer yeah. and he would look at you and go no you you go <laughs> back and watch his fight with pele landy jones Oh my god! I mean, you would have thought. Go, watch his, watch his opening fight with a guy named Noe Hernandez mm -hmm. in the UFC. I think it was, I want to say UFC seventeen, and Noe Hernandez could hit, and Chuck took shots from him. You know, I got a little swollen up, but man, some huge shots, and just kept going. Yeah. You just look, and you go, you know, Rampage Jackson used to have that same kind of chin, yeah. and eventually it started to go away. I just saw with Anderson though, like it was the same thing. It was like he was kind yeah. of unstoppable. But then I also look at the two of them. You see, like Anderson, I think towards the end of his career, when he would get hit, he would do all the fake dancing. He was like, you could tell that was almost like a moment for because the other fighters respected him so much that they wouldn't go forward. Like, oh, he's just showboating now, and like yeah. I didn't really hurt him. Shit, I don't want to take my chance, and he hits me and knocks me out. And Izzy kind of does a little bit of that, almost like they're very, they're so similar in so many yeah, different very... ways. And I just, I feel like Izzy, when he did get hit with some stuff and he kind of got knocked off balance, he was hurt a little bit and they were oh, grazing yeah. shots. And I take from my own experience, right? My fight with Patriki, he grazed me off the top of my head and I just got like a flash. And I remember getting dropped in the first round. I'm like, I get back up. I'm like, what even hit me? He hit me with his forearm. It wasn't, and didn't hit me with the glove. It didn't hit me with his knuckles, nothing. It just grazed me, and all of a sudden, I was like off balance. And, you know, I'm 39 years old at the time, but still, at this age, this guy's got way more kickboxing matches than I ever had. Oh, yeah. You know, and... You gotta figure, Izzy's got over 100 professional fights yeah, between I mean, kickboxing and MMA. It's insane. And so, for it, for it to happen to him a little bit sooner it would be, would be uh, understandable. I... Can he still get it done against other guys? Absolutely, sure. he can. Just yeah. guys that will, once the pattern's laid out, we've said this before, once people start seeing the pattern to beat him, 
that blueprint. Yeah. But let me give you, in all fairness, though, the pattern that's been laid out right now to beat him is not the easiest pattern to get. Like, look, no, Sean, no, no, no. Sean was one take, pattern, which was completely specific, different than yeah. this pattern. And then Drick just laid out another one. But see, that's the one that everyone else was well, trying to fight and never got it done. But it is the pattern of, if there's one thing that is similar between the Sean Strickland fight and this fight, was Sean was consistently moving Izzy backwards. Yeah. In this fight, when Drickus would do well, it was when he was moving him backwards. And so, you know, if you're, you know, let's be honest, if you were, if you were a coach and you had 185 pound and you were going to fight Israel, one of the things that you would see on tape is mm -hmm. there's a huge difference between you moving him backwards and him moving you backwards. Mm -hmm. His ability to be offensive is when he's moving forward. When he's moving backwards, he can still be offensive, which a lot of guys really can't. He can, but he's not near as effective. No, I would agree with you, but in that process, you're you're playing his game. He's a counter striker. Yeah. And he's yeah. he's fat. He's still fast. Oh yeah. You know, he's still no doubt about it. He does throw straight strikes. He's not just someone that just throws loopy strikes. He's not he's he's a top world class Let's, level striker. Dude, his striking is slick yeah he does a lot of slick things that you watch him you know the way he sets up his counters and where the angles that he brings it from you know he he's good i mean and he will continue to be good for years to come but his ability to accept the damage i do believe is starting to wane a little yeah bit. i agree i agree uh, you know but i'm gonna take a little bit of time on drinkus right now too john who does he remind you of can I just, can I say one name? Go ahead. Keith Jardine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he reminds me of Keith Jardine. A little herky-jerky. Herky-jerky, sure. but then oh, yeah. also, too, like, kind of the body, like the big barrel chest, you know, kind of the knee knocked a little bit, I guess, like, you know, it just, I don't know. It's a weird, and he lunges in. Keith usually Lung, kind yeah, of lunge big, in with Big lunging punches. movements. Yeah. But, but when they touched you, sometimes you went down. Oh, and yeah. And Drickus has that a little bit, you know, and... He was good too. He could grapple. He could wrestle. He, could, he oh, yeah. you know, he could do all that stuff. So, I don't know. I, I felt like he reminds me of Keith Jardine. Um, damn, damn good of a fighter. I, I think a great fighter. But I'm gonna, I, I, I go with this whole thing though too. Is I, I'm saying this is he's a good fighter. This weight class is has been known to be weak throughout the whole you know UFC career of its weight class. 185 pound weight class is always the weakest. Has always been predominantly the weakest. It, it's weird. It, it hasn't had the plethora of no. you know, you know, fifteen to one. Wow, there's no. just stacked with with talent. Yeah, but it's always had. It seems one guy mm -hmm. sitting at that top, and then another guy who's close that are they just dominate yeah. the division. Yeah, so. yeah, me and then look, I, I filled um. I go back to some more of my experience, you know, with, with us in strike force, it was Gilbert and myself. And it seemed like we could always beat everybody else, no matter who they brought in. Yeah. I ran into Jay-Z Cavacante at the PFL. He had one of his guys there. I and saw him with hair. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I said. I said, brother, what is this? What is this? Like, I got to grow it out before it all falls out. <laughs> I get it. He's like, I got, you know, he's like, I have, I have young kids, you know? And so he said young kids. I'm like, what do you mean young? He's like, oh, like five and two or something like that. And I'm like, bro, you just got started? Like what's going on? And so obviously we, you want to wait till the end of your career, I think, to start having kids. But man, you could tell he's like, you know, it's getting thin up there. I got to grow it out now while I can. So he's a good looking dude, man. He's always dude. Been I saw, I saw him. I go, guy. holy shit, that's Jay Z, yeah, man. He's got hair. Yeah. Man, I was so afraid going into that fight. He just had so much power, and I knew he was hard to take down. Like I wasn't too concerned about his jiu jitsu, but man, I knew he could hit hard and crack. And he, he wasn't the easiest guy to take down. He had that relentless pressure. He just would come at you with big shots. And I was like, oh, man, this guy, you know, and I knew he was physically stronger than me because everybody was. But um, but look, Drickus is a good Drickus is a good guy. Good fighter. He's going to end up fighting uh, Sean Strickland next. I mean, do you see a repeat or do you see Sean fighting him differently? I, th I see Sean looking at that blueprint and mm -hmm. saying, hey, I, I cannot let him push me back. Yeah. If I have to stand in the middle and just hold ground then that's what I do, but I cannot have him pushing me back, mm. you know? And the big thing that he's got to work on, like if there's, I'll give, you know, Drickus does a good job when he goes for the takedowns of being the guy who doesn't give up on it mm. and reshoots 
and and, and reestablishes at least changing a level and going again. You know, a lot of guys will give up on so he doesn't give up on him, man, and, and that makes him tenacious and that makes him hard to deal with. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. If you guys are wondering why we're yawning, it's uh, two in the morning for you guys. For us, I mean, for yeah, us, for yeah. us, that's so okay. We're filming this. We are committed directly after the show. Look, if you guys can see the camera, George is actually laying down on his bed as he's <laughs> George is with dying. Us. He's dying. He's dying. But he is wearing a Chicago Cubs jersey. He is. He is. God bless him for that. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. All right, let's go ahead and go right into... (laughs) But look, if you guys guys listen to my... my suggestions through BetUS. I said, Ooh. take Drickus. I thought Drickus was going to be the one that won. I thought he was going to get the takedown. I thought he'd be able to ground and pound him out. Um, there was one suggestion that I made that didn't go, but it didn't. I don't think anyone ever saw it going past a round and a half, which was the Tai of Vasa fight with the Rosen Strike. I mean, but outside of that, pretty much my we'll predictions were one. on point. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk. Let's go Kai Car France versus uh, Steve Ersic. Steve Ersic. Th- you know, this is one of those ones. That- I don't know. You know, I said the one thing about Kai Kara France is for a 125 pounder, he's got power. Yeah, which is unusual. And he he's was going to be that the faster one, fighter, also. Yeah, he's like he's got that one punch. But the big thing that you looked at in saying, okay, where is Ursig? Ursig's the better grappler. There's no doubt about that. And he's a long, tall guy where Kai Kara France is not that guy. And so mm-hmm. you look and go, that that can cause problems for him. But Kai Kara France is that guy. Hey, if he can establish his distance and understand what he needs to do, he's effective in his striking. And, and there's no doubt he's got power in his hands, and it's rare mm-hmm. for a 125-pound fighter, you know, be it man or woman, you just don't see people that are able to put people away with one shot, basically. Yeah. And he has, he has done it time and time again where he's proven that he can seriously hurt someone and then finish them off with one more shot. And that's that's something that, you know, when you're going to face him, you're facing someone that is different than everybody else, basically, in your division because you've got to be careful of accepting that one shot. And, and his stand-up is clean. It's good. He, he makes good movements. His head positioning, you look how he takes his head just a little off center when he, when he steps forward. He does all the right things to make it difficult to be in that stand-up game. It's a guy that, you know, you look and you go, you want to take him to the ground, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> take him out of where he's good. But I thought it was actually an enter- I thought it was an entertaining fight. I thought both guys were doing well. It was, you know, fairly even as far as mm-hmm. when the fight went uh as far as you know, it didn't go you know, past the first round, but it was fairly even as far as that round. They were both getting good shots in on each other. Kaikara's face was getting a little bit red and stuff. You could see so Ursic was touching him. He just landed the better shot first. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I expected a little bit more grappling. Look, if you go back into our midweek show, I basically said Kai had the faster hands, and I felt like yep. he had the more power. But when I looked at Ursic, he could stand with him. He could trade with him. But I said, if you want to make this an easy fight, you got to maybe threaten the takedowns. I'm not saying you have to force them, chase after them, you know, on your hands and knees. But you need to at least keep that in his mind. So he's a little bit more hesitant with throwing heavy shots. He would just throw like quick little pitter patters because he doesn't want to get taken down over. Yeah, I just want to touch. I, I just want to get get to that point where I just want to touch you. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. And what he did was he used his speed and his power. And uh, once he realized that Ursek wasn't like committed to, okay, look, we're going to get into some grappling. No, we're going to be in a kickboxing. We're yeah. going to be in a kickboxing fight. That's and cool, yeah. That I the speed and power will generally win, especially in the first round. If you're a fight, if you're fighting someone that has more speed and more and has more power than you. And they're not that good on the grappling or the wrestling. I didn't. I just don't understand. Like it should have been laid in the coaches' minds and to talk to to Ursig, be like, "Hey, let's just get a hold of him in the beginning. Let's grab him. Let's see how he feels. Let's slow his arms down a little bit. Yeah, just Let's make his arms something. heavy. Even if the, even if that's using kicks to his arms and shoulders. Yeah, I didn't you get know, it. I want to make his arms heavy. I didn't get it. So I mean, I was leaning towards Ursig on the fight because the the time away from Kai Car France, I was thinking that. Uh, and I thought Ursek being as active as he has been and then having the success that he has and just all the stuff coming off the title loss, but still like, okay, look, a lot of people said a lot of good things about him, us being some of them. 
Yeah. I thought he was. I thought he was. A, I think he still. I still think he is a really damn good fighter. I think he'll be back. He is. Um, you know, when you look at him, you don't look at you look at him and think, oh, I don't see much. But I see Astro it. Boy. I see it. Astro I see it in his striking. I see it in his grappling. I see it in his well roundedness. He he's got a bright future. You know, he's not old either. He's still young, so it'll be good. I think. Um, just I I don't I don't I don't agree with him keeping it on the feet. And I think Kai was able to exploit that once he realized he wasn't, they weren't threatening takedowns. Let's let the hands go let the big dogs eat. And they ate, sure, man. Sure. They well, ate. and it sure makes life easy for Kai. Yeah, they were eating that up. Nom, nom, yeah. nom, nom. All right, next fight. Dan Hooker taking on Mateus Gamrot. This was a hell of a fight. Yep. This was a hell of a fight. They just went after it. They were tenacious. You got to love Dan Hooker, man. <laughs> Sorry, we, we kind of said it before you know, in the. Thanks, man. I just love Dan Hook. I just love his attitude. And then in the middle of the fight, well, it was between the second and third round. He says, I love this shit. Yeah. And I go, you're a sick bastard. You know, he's all fucking, yeah. He was, he fought a smart fight. I thought that the first round, when you know, obviously, uh, when uh, Mateus put him down onto one knee with a shot, it, he really started, to, he, took, he was taking that round over. And then Hooker came back and hurt him. And it was the difference of, you know, I saw some people giving the round to Gamron. You go, Hooker was never in that position where he was almost, he looked like, oh, he's in, he's in trouble of being finished where Gamron was. Mm. And you, you got to look and say, man, the, it's the finishing sequences in a round. If someone gets to a finishing sequence, you know, that's, that's important. And there was, you know, fights that we had, you know, tonight that showed, exactly that you know you had the um i want to say what kurobo uh, joshua uh Kuba. Kulaba. Kulaba. Yeah. Kulaba. Kulaba. you know the fight that he had you know you take a look and you go man that round that you know ricardo ramos was getting hurt his leg was and then Kulaba ends up you're getting you know his back taken and he almost got choked unconscious yeah he survived mm -hmm. But man, you could tell it was tight, and he managed gutted it out. But that makes it lose the round mm -hmm. because you were close to being finished. Well, it's the same thing with this, you know, this round with Hooker, and then Gamera was the more hurt fighter. When you're taking a look at, you know, their ability to stay in the fight, and and or were they going to be finished? That was the difference in that round. I thought Gamera obviously took the second round. I thought the the takedown with, you know, the control on the ground, some good strikes, you know, just more time. Uh, he had some good strikes in the stand-up. I thought it was even going into the third. And then you got to look, and you, that third round says a lot because Gamero did some good work. He landed some really good shots in it. But you look at the guillotines when he's trying to take him down, and you see when he's got to actually roll out to get out of that problem, it's telling you it's tight. Yeah. Okay, and so that right there is eh, you have to do something that you don't want to do to get out of this. Okay, I got to give credit to Hooker. He's putting you in that position. And then Hooker landing those elbows to the side of his head. Mm. Look at those hurt. You know they hurt. Okay. <laughs> he used to do practice and get hit in the head with an elbow. It's like, God damn that. Because yeah. it hurts for days. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, those are adding up and you're just – Staying there, allowing him to elbow you in the head, and he's taking over. He's landing stuff, and you're you're doing nothing but kind of hiding down there. And then by the end of the round, you look at who's the guy that's trying to finish the fight, yeah, and who's the guy that is trying to survive to the end. Let me get through this. And and to me, that was Mateus Gamera at the end, and I gave it to Dan Hooker. I gave him the mm. first and the third, and the judges that uh. That uh, the, the judges that gave Hooker, they, they gave him the same rounds, and that, it was it was the right call in my opinion for that. Yeah, I look at the first round. I, I felt like it was still like a toss. I, it really depends on what your perspective. It was close. Yeah, what your perception of, of how hurt he was, how hurt Gamrot was, and how hurt Dan was when he hit the ground, mm -hmm. and how you viewed it, and where you were sitting probably when you viewed it. Oh sure. Um, you know, and so that kind of. That round I just put up in the, as a toss-up. I probably leaned a little bit more towards Dan on that round based on the fact that it happened towards the end of the round. That's the last thing the judges see. And sometimes that, that is a difference maker. That's the thing that goes, look, he obviously he went through getting hurt, 
And he came yep, back he and came finished back. even better. You right. know, and so it's one thing that sure I heard him, you know, in the first, but or earlier in the in the round. But yeah, but the other guy weathered that storm and then came back and hurt you. So that kind of is like the last thing that's on their judge's mind. And so yep. I leaned towards Dan on that round. Obviously, he lost the second round. Going into the third, I, I honestly, it was a toss. It really yeah. just depended because I felt like Gamrot landed the harder shots in the third. He landed some except good Except for shot. the elbows. I thought the elbows were obviously, those were nasty on the side of the head. Um, but it was, he landed the harder shots. He had a little bit more of the, he had more cleaner, harder shots landed. But Dan put the pressure and then did some good work in some of those things as well. So it was it was a toss up round. For it was a third. good fight. It was a Just damn a good, good fight. fight. I don't yeah. want to take anything away from either fighter. It was a no. very good fight. But I will say this: what happened in the tie to Avasa fight? We'll kind of. I, we will talk about that. But the judge giving it thirty twenty seven to, to tie to Avasa, and then being relieved of the of his duties or it's I don't know if it was a girl or not, but it was a. Um, but relieved of their relieved duties. Relieved of their duties. Yeah, relieved of their duties um, was also mentioned during that fight. And so my take, as soon as I started hearing scores, and obviously you're like, all right, what are we getting here? Like, it, it just felt like a home crowd thing again. And it just like, okay, we're just going to give it to Dan now because of the judges are this. But it, John and you and I were texting back and forth. It just came down to it only takes one judge to have a card like that in another country. And even oh, if it was here in the States, you start thinking, Oh, they're only favoring their fighters now. And it just kind of changed my outlook. And I'd never been through that before. And I was like, I started looking at the fight a little bit differently as I was thinking about the judge. And then, and then obviously John Anik brings it up. They relieved the, the judge of their duty. And I'm like, okay, well, cool. And then I, and the first thing I heard was split decision, this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, they're going to, they're going to, you know, for me, I was like thinking, oh, for sure. Then Gamrot's going to, Gamrot's going to lose. Cause it, it was already in my head. From the tie to Avasa fight that the judges were making these type of uh you know scorecards. Yeah. Yeah. So and a little bit of the of the commentary kind of bled into that. DC's like, oh yeah, that guy down there, you know, the guy that had 30 20, you don't know what you're gonna get. And then obviously, if you're a fan, you're listening, going, Yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So um, but yeah, yeah the the Jarzinho Rosenstruck versus Tai to Avasa fight was uh first off, it was disappointing. I'm just gonna be honest. As yeah. far as I thought it was, I thought it was going to end in a knockout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, but I, the part that I really looked at, and it's like, you cannot beat a guy in, in Tai Tuiavasa who you're a brawler. That is your style. That is who you are. And that is what makes you go. And that's what, that's what creates problems for other guys. Mm -hmm. But you try to be a technical striker with a technical striker. Yeah. probably not going to go your way and it didn't he took the heavier shots by far you know to just take a look rosenstruck didn't have a mark on him mm -hmm. you know ty's face it's you know right now it's swollen up mm -hmm. you know his eyes are freaking little slits and everything his nose is all fat he took a lot of shots and he took some hard shots he got hurt a couple of times you could see him get hurt and you look and you go you know i thought that was an easy 30 27 for Rosenstruck. <laughs> yeah, when it I mean, came out 30 27 for Ty, I went, What? Ty, Ty's going to be at the club doing some shoeies tonight. Yes, he is. Drinking them sorrows away. I mean, look, I, I agree with you. Little it was a painkiller. It was a very disappointing fight. So uh, I expect them. <clears throat> I want to say, I don't want to say I expect him more out of Ty, but I agree with you. He tried to be, make it a technical striking game. And yes, you're, you're trying to do that against someone who is obviously more technical than you. Almost every fighter you fought, Ty, to Avasa. Is tech more technical than you? What got you those wins when you went on that run was you ma making them fight a dog fight, making them fight yeah. your fight, putting it into a phone booth, being in that tight proximity, using grappling and, and taking them off their feet at times. Like, let's be honest, Rosenstruck is not a guy that is known for anything on the ground. Yeah, you know he's a turtle on his back there, and so. If you're on top of him, you're he's not going to get you off, as long as you can you know have the you know the common you know ability to control positioning and stuff. You're going to stay on him the whole round. I'm not saying that he's going to be easy to take down, but he's not a great wrestler. Yeah. Use your style to close the distance, get into him, and make it dirty. If you just yeah. grab his leg and lift it, he would fall down. Yeah. 
That was like, like any time I ever yeah. felt threatened. What training. you what you saw what you saw Gamro doing with Dan Hooker, mm -hmm. you know, is tough to do yeah. when you're Dan Hooker and hold on to that balance point and everything. But you know, good fighters can do it. Heavyweights don't do it. John, if I ever got yeah. tired and I was like having a hard time with Dan, uh, Paul Bonatello, I would just grab his leg and lift it. It only had to be lifted. Paul Bonatello yeah, but, was, he had yeah, no flexibility. Paul, I was going to say, Paul's not the most flexible. Dude. Neither is Rosenstruck. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, by the way, has got a head kick knockout. Yeah. In yeah. Hawaii. I, I yeah. cornered him for that fight, went out there. I think it was like a whole minute head kick knockout. Beautifully Look, done. Look, I, I will never say anything bad about Paul Bonatello because that son of a bitch had one hell of a jab. Oh, he did. It was yeah. fast. It was quick. Just a fast, snapping, hard jab, and he lit people up. So fast train. He's a tough dude. Uh, next fight, Li Jing Liang versus Carlos. Pr How do you say it? Pratis? Pratis. 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 Yeah, Pratis. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what. The nightmare looked so good. He was relaxed from the beginning of that fight. He can, you know, he's got that, that body type that you look at him at 170 pounds. He's tall. He's long. He has a 78 inch reach. That's huge. It's like my Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in, uh, I, didn't, I, I can't say it now. So I'll get myself go ahead. In trouble. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but, you know, this fight, I, I've never been that guy that thought that, you know, Li Ji Liang is that, oh, you know, he's a, he's a top 10 fighter. I've never thought that about him. I thought that, you know, they, they brought him when he really didn't have a lot of talent <clears throat> because they wanted Chinese fighters. Uh, he had decent boxing, you know, and he had a hell of a chin. And he really made himself into a very good fighter, mm. you know. And he's a tough dude, and, and I really, I've enjoyed watching him in a lot of his fights. But this was the one fight, I mean, that, you know, you can go and look at, you know, his fight <clears throat> against Kamzat where he got his back taken right away and he got choked unconscious. and. You know, yeah, he got dominated it, but in the stand-up, I've never seen someone dominate him mm -hmm. the way that Protus did in this fight. Protus just absolutely obliterated him. He was hitting him with anything he wanted. I mean, you know, and and when he would knock him down, just stand there, take a step back, which some fighters should learn something about. You know, we'll talk about that. But just you know, go ahead and get up, and you know, let me do it again. And, you know, you could take a look, and it's funny because, you know, the first round, he, he knocked him down three times, you know? And then they go, 10-9 round. I go, yeah, probably 10-8 round. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay? If it was boxing, it would be a 10-6 round. Yeah. Okay? But you take a look, and it's like, you know, he just looked like he was sparring someone in his gym that just wasn't on his level. And he just kept putting shots on him until, you know, finally put him away. And that's... You keep getting hit, and you get you get hit with hard shots over and over. They add up, and it finally did. I'm I'm not gonna even really talk about the fight. Uh, process looked fantastic, but what I want to talk about is uh, more of a personal thing for you inside the cage as a referee, and you're just seeing this unfold. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to find ways to stop it? Oh yes, because I'm like absolutely. Man. This guy gets dropped that many times in the first, and then just getting fucking pieced up. It gets dropped, like I mean, and then the way he got knocked out at the end. I mean, Prada's just walked away, and he just, you know, and Lee just did the, basically the face dive and the yeah. and the the folded, you know, diving into the into the pool kind of thing. Yeah. I was just like, ah, oh. I mean, as, as a as a, do you go like after the first round? Should he have gone? Does the ref go back to the corner and go, hey, if I see him in trouble one more time, I'm stopping this because three times in the first is a lot. I do not know if he did, but I can tell you that he should. But do, have you, and, and, have, have and you the, done that? Oh, absolutely. And I've gone to so many corners and said, look, telling you right now, you know, I want you to watch your fighter and make sure that you're protecting him because I'm not going to let him take a whole lot more abuse like he yeah. took in that round. If he's taking the same type of abuse that I just saw, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be stopping the fight. So maybe you should think about stopping it too. And just tell them. Now they're not going to, but what am I doing? I'm I'm setting it up that they know when I do it, it's not like, oh, it's a surprise. Shock, I told yeah. you I was going to do it. Yeah, I mean, so. I just, as I started watching, I was like, man, there's just no way he's winning this fight. No. It's then, and Protestant, didn't, he looked like he wasn't even breaking a sweat yet. He wait, dude, he didn't. And I'm like, oh. I mean, as a, as a ref and as a corner, 
I mean, you're just thinking, man, this is the worst fucking scenario. And then he laid there for a while afterwards. Yeah. Like, look, he was still out for like a minute afterwards. Like, yeah, that's because DC kind of said, oh, you know, what he's, get, get him some smelling salts. Oh, jeez. Like, I didn't hear that. Dad, I love you. Uh, but yeah, he said, get him some smelling salts. Jeez, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's, that's really what we need right now, smelling salts. Oh, man. <laughs> Wake his ass up. <laughs> Put some uh, ammonia in Great his performance face. by Pradas. Uh, next yeah. fight. Ah, we had Walter Walker taking on Junior Taffa. This went, you know, like we thought it would. You know, Walter, uh, he's got good stand-up, Johnny Walker's brother, but he's more, you know, ten, his tendency is to take the fight to the ground. We know that Junior Taffa has got fast hands, heavy hands, and has no ground game. And that's basically what happened with this. And the end was, you know, right near the end of the round, Walker, you know, Decides to go for the leg. He ends up switching from a straight ankle lock into a heel hook. And when you t- when you go and you start to scream out in pain, Josh, we've said it how many times on this mm-hmm. show? If you, as the fighter, we talk about Chael Sonnen and everybody else, and you know, I've I've stopped world championship fights off of, hey, if you scream out in pain because you can't take what's occurring, I'm going to stop the fight. It's a verbal tap. You lose. Do you understand? I say it in the back all the time. Every every fighter ever worked with, yeah, and and then the best was, you know, DC and Dom were like, well, I don't know, I'm like Jesus, Dom, I do not know. Dom goes, yeah. Dom goes, yeah, he's like, I think sometimes they tell you in the back, like if you scream that it's over. Yeah, no shit. I was like, man, because I've told Dom that same line myself. I've told Dan that same line. Now I don't, I don't blame them for not remembering. How but do you not every, remember, John? Every, every time. I got I got over 40 fights, and only probably about 20, 22 of them have I fucking had a ref in the back going, hey, if you scream, it's a verbal tap. You can get out of the fight by this, by telling the corner to tell the, the ref or whatever, the, the commissioner or whatever to stop the fight, and then tap, you know, verbally, like, or getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, you tell yeah. them. That, that rule like, has been around, what, for since, since the beginning yes since, since the, beginning. the beginning and and it's a whole the whole thing is this is people sit there and say well you know you, you know you know the he just screamed it's like how do you know what happened yeah if you if the person how many times have you seen fighters go through really serious submission holds you know the arms being bent tony ferguson against like charles Oliveira doesn't say a word okay and takes a lot not to say a word when that's happening. No. But he's in control. He's controlling what is there. You know, he you know it hurts, but he's in control of himself. He understands what's occurring. He can decide to tap if he wants. And if he wants to try to get himself out, try to get yourself out. If I see damage and I see the arm dislocate and go, then I'm going to stop the fight. I've told you that. But we give you this. But when you show that you cannot take the pain of what that submission hold is doing and you scream out in pain, the fight's over. You just lost. And it's because we don't know. Did you know did your did your ligaments just get torn apart? I mean, yeah, let's I mean let's take a look at too like Patrick Cote, remember when he fought Anderson Silva? Yeah. He screamed out in pain, grabbed his knee and all he was Pop doing was bouncing knee. around. Same thing, yeah. Tom Asinol bouncing around all of a sudden boom yeah. ah you know so yeah, i get it i understand yeah, that's it i get it but i had to i had to play like i didn't get it so everyone else at home could figure it out <laughs> uh next one joshua kulabal versus ricardo ramos well i'll tell you what this was a hell of a fight Great man fight. tough fight back and forth uh you know ramos got the win i actually thought kulabal won the fight i thought you know not that you know Ramos got the, you know, it was obvious that the first round went to Ramos. It was obvious the second round went to Kulibau. The third round was, you know, a little back foot, but it was, I think what the judges looked at was that Ramos took him down, mm. you know, near the end of the fight, but he didn't do anything. Mm. In fact, all he did was hold on to him. And why? Because I don't want to get back on my feet. My leg can't take it anymore. Mm. Okay. So, but, you know, I thought overall it was a f- uh, fun fight to watch. The one thing that I'm going to go off of, here you go with fight IQ. When Kuliabao ended up putting him down with the leg kick 
and you see him standing there over him. And I'm standing there. I'm, I'm standing watching the fight. And I'm going, step back. Yeah. Step back away from him. And the reason why is because if you step back away from him, the referee's going to come in and make him get up. That's what you need to do in this situation. Make him stand on that leg so you can go after it again. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's bouncing around and I'm like, oh my God, you're, you're letting that leg get some feeling back. You know, it was lack of fight IQ led to Josh Cooley about not getting a win in that fight. Yeah, I mean, that first round should have been his. He just basically dropped him with a leg kick. And yeah. then he rushed in, basically got, he fell right into his guard and then right into his back. He's like, yeah, yeah. why don't you just take my back? I'm going to let you finish right here. And then it almost finished me twice. Oof. Yeah, they were those were deep, deep chokes. Oh, man. I'll was, tell you what. you say, I, I give Cooley about credit because, man, he oh, was relaxed for a guy getting uh, – it was tight. They know? were real tight. There's he had just a little bit of space yeah. with the blood starting to go. But yeah. uh, next fight, like uh, Casey, o Casey O'Neill against Luana Santos. Mm -hmm. Look, Casey O'Neill looked as good as she's ever looked. She looked great on her feet. Her stand up with Eddie Cha. You know, she's she's uh, training out at Fight Ready mm -hmm. in Arizona. Uh, Eddie Cha has done a great job with her because she her stand up never looked. Mm -hmm as good as it looked in this fight. Luana Santos is coming off of, uh, you know, some big wins and stuff, and everyone was expecting she was the favorite in this fight. Casey O'Neill just ended up piecing her up throughout this fight. Fantastic performance. She looked great. Any other fights on here you want to talk about? Uh, you know, um, I am going to say that uh, uh, Keenan Song looked really – he's tough. Mm -hmm. Ricky Glenn put on a, a, a tough fight. He, uh, you know, stayed tough, you know, trying to stay with in the fight, uh, but wasn't you know, able to get the win. But I thought that the, the one that really stood out was the Tom Nolan, Alex Reyes fight. Mm -hmm. Tom Nolan from uh, Australia. He looked good. Kid's going to be seeing He's tall for 155 pounds. He's six foot three and tough as hell. Alex Reyes is, you know, the brother of Dominic Reyes and. Uh, he put on a hell of a fight, you know, trying. He just was just getting hit with a guy that just used his length, used everything, used some spinning attacks. Just younger, better fighter. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. Saying. All right, hey guys, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. But hey, the PFL conversation is brought to you by Element. Element is sponsors us, but also sponsors uh, PFL. I just found that out when I showed up to the venue at the Hollywood Hard Rock Casino in Florida. Yeah, but it was pretty funny. So look, man, we got a thousand milligrams of salt in this thing, Macy, of sodium, which is good for you, especially right now. My son was playing soccer all day today in the heat. The temperature on the turf, John, was 148 degrees. Oh, you got to be kidding. No. The 148? 148. I was actually surprised that the soccer, whatever you want to call it. Surprised they let him play. Was allowing them to play. Yeah. But then uh, his second game of the, of the day was uh, on grass. And so that worked out a little bit better. It was also later in the evening. This was literally in the middle of, in the middle of the morning, like at 11, 30, 12. That's because you, you got those hot. fields with the, the fake fields with the rubber. No, this didn't have the rubber. They, they, what they're doing now the is they're walnuts. trying to remove all the, yeah, the walnut shell. Crushed up walnut shells with the sand over it, the fine sand. You yeah. know, what they need to start doing, though, is they need to start doing something where they do a spray, like a light mist spray or like a sprinkler attachment so they can kind of get the sand wet so it keeps that temperature down on it. You know, and you don't need to spray it long, a minute. Give it a minute for it gets over one, you know, one time. 
you know, every hour or something like that, it'll make a big difference. It's at 148 degrees. That's it's, insane. It's evaporating pretty fast. Well, what happens is, you know, kids, when they play in their soccer shoes, they got that hard plastic where the cleat is, and that yeah. warms up. When that warms up, it feels like your feet are on fire. Yeah. So... But yeah, this uh this PFL conversation is brought to you by Element Man. I've been using their product. Obviously, you can buy it in the cans, the Element Sparkling. This is easy for me on the go, easy for my kids too when I take it for them uh, for their sports activities. It was 102 degrees, 110 on the concrete, 148 on the turf today. So uh definitely want to stay hydrated. Good game in the morning. They won uh they tied this morning, uh, did well. The evening game, they ended up winning 3-0. Good job. They're in the semifinals tomorrow. So looking forward to that. And if you guys are concerned about, oh, yeah, you're giving, you're giving your kids too much salt. I'm sorry, but my kid, when he walks off because he just drinks probably close to a little bit, about a gallon a day of water, this will help keep that water in his body. And that's really what we're looking for. I want to make sure that his muscles have salt in them because that helps retain the water. That retention of the water actually helps repair the muscles. So before you guys try to lecture me on how much salt and sodium and all this stuff is in this stuff, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I was doing it with just regular sea salt and Celtic sea salt before. It actually changed my career in MMA when I started using salt loading in the morning. So I would salt load in the morning and it would give it would make my performances better throughout the day. I wasn't cramping as much. I had more energy. My muscles had more go. So before people get into the comment section talking about, oh, it's too much salt and sodium. That's because people have been told for how long salt's bad for you. It's not bad for you, especially if you're an active person and someone that's working out on a farm like John or somebody like myself. I play um, indoor soccer and outdoor soccer a little bit here and there on the sides. My son's my son keeps you busy, man. A lot of yeah. stuff going on. So we're getting that sweat on. Make sure you guys check out Element. The link is down below in our descriptions. If you guys use a per, if you guys purchase through our link, they'll send you a bonus package of whatever every purchase you make with them. Uh, if you can always go back, it's not just the first time. It's every time you use our link, they give you a bonus package of of a uh, product. So check Very them out. Nice you can buy the packets or you guys can buy the cans. I prefer the cans because I, I do everything on the go with kids and sports. But the packets are actually just as good. You can water them down. So I love the packets. Yes, yeah, so it'll taste as salty. And the but, packets um, are easy to pack. They are easy to pack. Yeah, the cans are not. And, you know, yes. you can't get on a plane with the cans. No. <laughs> so, all right, hey, let's go ahead and jump right into the PFL. What do you got for us there? The main event. Well, we had the playoffs for the light heavyweights and the lightweights. We had Impa Kasanganai in the main event taking on a guy that he beat last year to win the PFL championship in Josh Silvera. And, uh, the, you know, we talked about this. He said, Josh is going to have to do something different. If you go back and you watch, you know, the first fight, Impa won every round of it. And not that Josh didn't fight hard. It just, you know, just wasn't able to get it done. Tried to use his wrestling, got a little bit tired. And in this one, he really didn't, really didn't try to use his wrestling much. He just tried to out tough him, mm -hmm. and and I was really like you know I I like Josh Silvera. I think he's a good fighter. He's he's got good wrestling, but and he's tough. There's no doubt about it. But it, you can't out tough somebody. You gotta you gotta you know be able to put them in positions. I where, call bullshit. You can out tough someone. And uh, <laughs> it's, you, you got, it's difficult if you're both fighters. But yes, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's that's the whole thing. It's like. Yeah. Man, you know, Impa's not a guy that's going to stop. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to fold because, you know, you're coming forward. He's just going to keep on putting shots on you. And that's really what he did. You know, he he landed the bigger, heavier shots throughout. I thought Josh was a little surprised that he lost the fight. And uh, I didn't think it was that hard of a fight to figure out when, you know, in watching it. And I thought Impa was just the better fighter overall mm -hmm. in the shots that he landed and, and the way he, you know, went through the rounds i think what the difference is josh fought a different fight this time in terms of the pressure he like you said try to bully him around and i thought he yeah. had more success he landed more stuff but then again this was in a three-round fight but he just didn't do yeah. enough it wasn't enough to win him the fight i thought josh did look a lot better than their first fight yes he, he did that game plan he that did. he had for this fight was a lot more effective and I would. I wish you would have seen him wrestle. He did. He did wrestle a little bit. I believe it was the third round. He wrestled. He got a take. He got a couple. Got one takedown. Two takedowns. Something like that. He just couldn't control the position though. He wasn't no. able to keep the top position. Couldn't keep him there. Yeah, couldn't yeah. keep him there. Um, like we said, Imp was a better fighter at two hundred five. Josh Silvera. He's got the right. He had the right mentality in the way he changed it up. He did a different fight. He didn't come out and try to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't enough. Yeah. 
I agree. Next fight. Uh, next fight was Dovlet Yagshimuridov taking on Rob Wilkinson. And I, I was very surprised by the way Rob Wilkinson fought this fight. Mm. Dovlet fought it exactly like we both talked about. You know, he tried to use his footwork, his speed. That's what he does. Did it well. Every now and then went for the takedown, which even when you don't get it, at least it makes your opponent realize, oh, you know, I have to at least, you know, be cognizant of it mm -hmm. and then, you know, not let it happen. Um, I looked at this and I thought that Rob Wilkinson didn't use his size advantage mm -hmm. in it. I didn't think that he's fought a smart fight. Normally when he's doing well, he's going forward. He got put on his back foot a lot in this fight. And it's tough to tell at times, you know, when obviously Yagsha Murdoff was touching him and, and hitting him with some shots. Obviously those shots had more effect on Rob Wilkinson than it looked like they were having because he started to really, as the rounds went on, give more and more as far as he would give space and time, then come back to engage, then give space and time and come back to engage. So Yagsha Murdoff obviously was having an effect with the shots he, he was landing. John, we need to put some respect on this man's name, man. He's oh, good. Dude, I love, he's I love good. it, man. He is good. He's fun to watch. He's explosive. He's got power. Look, it was a very difficult fight for Yogs, I think, to fight because yeah. he was afraid if, if this guy does get a hold of me, he could take me down. He'd probably maybe try to control me from the top or sure. he could just he could land a hard, clean shot. I could be out. Yogs is not a big guy. Neither is Impa, though. And so no. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call you. Oh, they match up very they, well. That's where I'm at. I actually give Yogs the the advantage. The speed, the um just I think the overall athleticism too goes to Yogs Smirnoff. He's just a, I think a, a better athlete. He moves real light on his feet. He's I think he's got more power than Impa. He's, he's the faster guy and he's got more power. You're absolutely that's usually right. a recipe for success. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not. Yeah, and you, but Impa Impa continues to be impressive in the fact that he'll he'll go through those moments and continue to do what he does until he finds a way to cause you a problem yeah and that's what that's why he's winning that's why he's fun to watch this is true this is true but i mean i said this last year or actually the beginning of this year i said we're gonna end up with all bellator guys in the championship that's all just that's, well it, they went from oh pfl versus bellator now it's just gonna be bellator versus bellator it's, well, no, it's, it's all like it, it's all PFL guys. That's the way I look at Stop it. it, John. You're being but politically it, but correct right now. But it is no, I'm not being. Choose your correct. side. I'm going to tell I'm you looking. this right now. I was there in the back. I'm going to tell <laughs> you this. Your side. All man. of the all of the people that used to work for Bellator were texting all of the Bellator fighters in the back, going, "You got this. Make sure you win for us." All the ones, <laughs> all of them that used to work for Bellator, you got this. Don't let these guys beat you. It's so great. It's Did so it great. We still have that little, there's still that little, like, you know, uh, community that's like, no, no, he's still like one of our guys. Yeah. But, you know, after after and he it, wins the PFL championship, he probably had to switch over to PFL. To be like, <laughs> well, he was PFL. who's going to get a chance at that that was a Bellator? Well, he was a PFL fighter first, then he was a Bellator fighter. And let, let's put it this way. When he was, he was young in his career when he fought in the PFL. And he became much better in the five fights that he was with. Uh, mm -hmm. He went to the Eagle, which was uh, Nurmagomedov's uh, promotion there for a little bit. Then he came to Bellator. But Godzi Rabadinov, mm. who you've known for a long time. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, he's gotten better and better and better. We've talked about it, you know, that, hey, his hands are getting better. His, the way he moves his head off the center line, mm -hmm. he's, he's becoming much harder to hit with a clean shot. And I'll tell you what, he looked the best that he's looked in fighting for the PFL against Michael Dufort. He made Michael Dufort look stiff, look unprepared. It was like watching the brawler against the technician. And we talked about that before. You know, we said, look, you know, God's he's, he's just a better technician when it comes to the stand-up game. And then he's got his wrestling. And Dufort just had no answer. He yeah. was trying to throw hard shots. And with the hard shots, he kept getting countered and hit and then opened up. Uh, he got hit with a beautiful left hook that just, I mean, it put him down. Yeah. And it really, he took a couple more shots that didn't need to happen. But uh, Godzi Rabotinov looked fantastic and moved himself into the 
finals for a million dollars against another Bellator fighter, Brent Primus, who had taken on Clay Collard. But go ahead and talk to me about Godsey. No, I mean, I don't have much to say, man. I, I, we talked about it. I said, he's a guy. When people say Dagestan, they think, oh, wrestling. He can wrestle. But yeah. he never wrestles. But boy, he can strike. And he can strike, though. He's got some power. He's not a big guy. He is a no. small 55-pounder. Yeah. He's just like, I don't want to cut the weight. What's the point of cutting the him. weight? I'm not Smart getting myself man. down. He he actually has good movement on the feet. He's relaxed out there. I was watching him crack the mitts in the back as he's warming up. I'm like, damn. I was like, I don't like I don't know. I just I've I feel you. I feel he seems very comfortable with this weight. It doesn't matter who he's fighting. I no. can I can stuff your takedowns. So if you have good jiu-jitsu, I can stuff your takedowns because I got better wrestling. And on the feet, he's got speed and he's got power. He's not a big guy, so he tends to be a little bit faster than the fifty-five pounders. You know, I mean, like I think obviously he he would have he would have a real hard time with guys like Shabli. He'd have a hard time obviously with guys like Usman, who he'd never fight because that's his teammate. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I think only the top guys, and even then, God's could beat them on a day where, hey, he's filling his oats. True. If he's feeling great. I think he's got that, that opportunity. But Look, he's good. Let's you, just, let's just yeah, say he's it. good. He's, he's freaking good. good. Yeah, he's good. He wasn't this good when I was training with him, but he's better. No. He's a lot better. Yeah. A lot yeah. better. He's really coming to his own. That's why uh, I said those, those five fights that he had in, under the Bellator banner, yeah. man, from when he came to Bellator to what he is now, huge difference. Yep. But he's matched up against another Bellator guy, the former champion, yep. Brent Primus. That's what the fight's going to happen there. Clay Collard and Brent Primus, that wasn't even, I mean, not, no disrespect we call, to Clay. We, call it, let's be honest. We called we call both of these. Yeah. But we said, no disrespect to Clay Collard at all. I actually got a chance to catch up with him right before the fight. He was sitting in the lounge, just hanging out. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me get, you know, let me get some words with you. He's like, you know, I, he's like, they always match me up. I always get matched up with the guy that is, that can be a good grappler and a good wrestler and this and that. I said, hey, he's got good leg kicks too. I go, sure, he's probably going to try to take you down. Yeah. I go, but, you know, that's up to you. You got to figure out how to stop these things. These guys will try to always find your weakness. Brett Primus has the ability to either leg kick you, your leg off or he's got the ability to take you down and control you and dominate you and chase submissions. And that's exactly what he did. The fight, yeah. after the first couple, after the first two takedowns, the fight was over. You yeah. could just see Clay had no answer for her. stopping the takedown. He had no answer for getting up. But I do have I do have the opponent in mind for Clay Collard, who I would like to see Clay Collard fight. Go ahead, spit it at me, Cedric Dumbe. Ah, but, tell me that wouldn't be a good fight. I, but Cedric's bigger than him. No, he's one fifty five. Maybe he just seems bigger because he's got more muscles. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, look, I don't, look, look, I don't want to really see that fight either. Because Clay, look, for me, Clay, he lost to Mads Brunel on the feet. And Clay's, yeah. Clay's you know, uh, what he always says is, no one will stand with me. I'm like, Mads just stood with you and beat you. And I like Clay a lot, you know, and I get it. He He's relentless with the pressure. He rips the body really well. You know, he can take a shot. He, he spars mm -hmm. with, like, top-level pro boxers. Sure, all of those things. Cedric Dubé will... Kick the head right off of Clay Carr. Oh yes, it would. And that's he, that's where he will definitely <laughs> kick. That's like, to me. That's not. But I do know this: the Shane Burgos call out. Uh, love that. That was by Maz Brunel. But I'm saying like I the love Shane, that. That to me like that fight's the one that I'm kind of most looking for is the Maz Brunel and Shane Burgos fight. Oh, love! I love that's the call out one. on that. In fact, I, I think I texted you said love that yeah. call out. That's great. But you know, Brent Primus did a fantastic job. He fought the fight he needed to fight. Uh, to win, uh, Biagio Ali Walsh against Brian Stapleton just walked through him. Two and zero. Oh. Two and zero oh is a pro. Good for him. Danny Sabatello taking on Lazaro Dayron. Well, I'll tell you what, the wrestling was on point for both of these guys. Man, yeah. Danny Sabatello is so tenacious, and you, you take it, Dayron can wrestle. That yeah. dude's an athlete. He is fast. He is strong. He can wrestle. And Danny Sabatello's just his tenacity. I loved him. It ended up being a majority draw based upon a point taken uh, in it. I didn't. I th I had Danny Sabatello winning the uh, last round. I agree, uh, but it is what it is, and so it became a draw. But the Mads Burnell versus Elvin Espinosa fight—that was a good fight. Great fight. What a fight! You know, it's funny because I talked to Mads Burnell when I was in Vegas and he was training, and talked about you know Elvin, and I said, "Hey, he's good." And he's good here and here. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I know. He says, but, you know, 
He goes, he says, we're going to see how good he is on his feet. Well, he mm-hmm. saw how good he because yeah. they, they fucking banged. And uh, that was a fun fight to watch. Yeah, I felt like there were certain fights. Now, look, I was a little bit more emotionally attached to the Danny Sabatello fight. And obviously with the Masvidal fight, they were back to back. I was following them around all day, getting their morning break, you know, with their breakfast and stuff, having a conversation with them about, you know, their fights and everything. But Matt, uh, Danny Sabatello, to me, I thought he won that fight. He lost the first round for sure. I even texted you. I said, hey, was it a 10-8 round? Because he got dropped. And he was he hit the ground. Yeah. He was out. And the ground kind of woke him back oh, up. Oh, dude. Yeah, he when he out. hit the ground. When he when he was going down, he was out. He was out. And, and the I ground was like, woke oh, him up. shit. And the guy woke him up. Then he got yeah. to scrambling, got to wrestling, this and that. I was sitting next to Johnny Eblen. And Johnny and I are just chatting up, talking about, like, you know, he's giving me the game plan. He's like, oh, no, well, Johnny good. Eblen's Dan's a teammate good. at American Top Team. So. Yeah. And so Johnny's like, no, no, he's good. He's back to the wrestling. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. You know? And I'm like, damn, dude, that was a nasty shot. Just say, dude, <laughs> if that's what good is, we got problems, man. Yeah. <laughs> but then um, second round, he wins the second round, dominant with the wrestling control, you know, had some good stuff in, in the second round. Third round, I had him win in the third round. He um, he took some shots in the third round. He did. But he did. He outworked him. He landed some of his own shots in some of the exchanges. And he was winning the position, and then he gets he gets the takedown, goes to the back. Now I know, like everyone's screaming in the uh, in the audience, and I know that you um, had chimed in on it, right? On terms of the, I heard you yeah. chimed in on it. Is that if you are in the back position, and the the his opponent grabbed the fence as Danny was kind of sliding off, his opponent grabbed the fence not to fall down, and then so then the ref stops it, uh, Keith. Peterson stops it, takes the point deduction, and then everyone's screaming, put them back in the same place. Absolutely. But you can't. Bullshit. So, okay. So this is so Keith Peterson talks to me about it. And mm-hmm. the people there, the commission there go, no, because as Danny's sliding off, I can't put him in that exact same position because I don't know okay. where he was okay, if, in that now, position. If if he's gonna say, uh, I couldn't tell what position he was in. Did he have his back? Well, he was off to the side on the back. He wasn't directly Did on the back. Did he have his back? I, no, he wasn't. I'm not Hold on. I'm not, say, I'm not saying he was riding his back. No, he was on the side of him, John. So, I know he didn't have his back then. Okay. No matter what position he was in, you put him back there. That's where he was at. I don't give Dayron any advantage from fouling. Yes, he gets a point taken away, but he doesn't get to be out of the position by fouling. So I don't give I don't give him anything. So then does okay. So then does Danny have an argument to have this? Uh, uh, what do you call it with the commissions? I know they aren't going to approve it, John. They're they're not going to change it because they're going to say no. The the referee made the decision to separate them and start them from their feet, but it's bullshit. Well, the referee was told though, from what I understand. That no, the rule is to if you did you didn't see you couldn't reestablish the same position. How can you how can you not reestablish the same position? How tough is it? I don't care what fucking position. It's gonna be fucking pretty tough for me not to be able to reestablish it. I've had fights where the fight stopped in the middle of a submission based upon lights going out. Mm. And I had to stop that submission. And I put them back in the same submission and told the guy, start cranking it, crank it Mm. more, crank it more fight. Okay. Mm. Because that's, what's right. You can't give somebody that uses a foul and the advantage of getting out of a position, you're taking something away from Danny and you're giving something to the guy that's committing the foul. You don't give them anything. We tell guys all the time, you are not going to, if you are the person that is in the position of a bad position and you foul, I'm going to put you back in that same position. If you're the person that's in the good position and you foul, I'm going to take you out of that position. How is that? It's the same thing. Yeah. It's, a, it's called an excuse. I get it. Keith wasn't the ref. I just want to make sure that's clear. But I was like, as they were all talking. No, no, I, I know what you're saying. That yeah. Keith wasn't the ref of the fight. Yeah, he wasn't the ref of the fight. But he was just explaining it to me after. Yeah. He's like, from what the the conversation was, was that they couldn't establish him back into that same position, which is why they didn't put them back there. 
So once he takes the point, then no. But then Danny was going, hey, if it's the rules wrong and you, they didn't follow the rules, can I petition this? And I was like, you probably can. I go, but I've worked with commissions before and they don't do shit. Hey, well, some, <laughs> some do and some don't. But you're taking a look at it and you're going, is it is it right that someone can use a foul to get out of a position? No. Mm. You know, it, it was the right call by, it was, uh, the referee was Christopher, I want to say Mignoshi, mm -hmm. something like that. But it was the right call to take the point. But it was not the right call not to put them in the right, back in the same spot. No. You don't give any advantage to the person that's cr creating your foul. I don't give you an advantage. Did you have Danny win the third round? I did. Up until uh, even before the, or as the, the foul was happening, you had him win in the third round? No, that would have I, been, I, I wouldn't say that he was winning it at that point that the foul happened. It was close. I actually you know, want to say that, uh, I, I can't say, I was trying to watch it and then I was talking and stuff, mm. so I always lose something out of that. But I, I looked at it at the end, Danny had landed a couple of good shots. And, and I, again, I go with the person that's trying not to survive to the end of the fight, but is actually trying to do something to bring an end to the mm -hmm. fight. And at that point, near the end of it, it's Danny that's yeah. trying to do something. Yeah, so. Danny was constantly trying to push the pace. Oh, yeah. Constantly. And then the Mads Brunel fight, man. I got to just, that guy, just that fight. If you guys haven't had a chance to watch it, you guys can uh, take a look at it. It was a, it was a great fight. Great fight. They, I mean, um, Espinosa with the big knees up the middle, um, you know, almost landed a couple hard ones there. I mean, he landed you know, some he's good got, body ones. He's got two losses in a row now. Yeah. And then you look and you go, he's a good fighter. He's a great he's a fighter. I think he's a fantastic fighter. If anything, he he's entertaining. Dude. Yes. If anything. He fights. I, I would not get rid of him. Yeah. Keep him in the oh, fucking God, thing. Oh, God, never. God, no. never. So, yeah. but overall, man, I thought, that was, I thought it was a good night of fights. You know, the other guys, that guy, the Thad Gene guy, he didn't have a great performance. He got in trouble. You know, uh, I know there was some. Uh, Chris some Brown is awkward. Yeah, but Chris Brown Chris also Brown got awkward. Did, who do you think won that fight? I thought that Gene won. The fight. Okay, so Chris Brown goes in the back and is you know very upset, yelling at the no. PFL managers and PFL people. You, you brought me here and you you fucked me, and I was like, oof, that's brutal, man. Okay. So, but anyways, uh, Jordan Oliver, I had a meeting with him all in the all day, and I said I gave him an example. I said, hey. Are you going to be one of those wrestlers that once you get a knockout or once you have dominant control and like your ground and pound's good, that you're just going to start trying to knock guys out? And he's like, no, no, I'm going to always keep with my roots. Oh, sure. Goes out there that night. And <laughs> not, one, one take, I don't think he shot one takedown on attempt until the third round. Brady yeah. shot one on him in the first. I was like, what the hell is going on? This fight's backwards right now. So, but uh, good for him, though. Um, uh Good, good win for him. I, he goes to be in two and zero, uh, and looking forward to moving on with all these things. So, hey, John, um, this is the last thing I'm going to bring up. George, where you at, buddy? Talk to us, George. Yeah, this is the. This is I'm going to show you guys this. This was to me it was hilarious. Dun, dun, dun. John, an offensive lineman about 300 pounds. What do you think the chances of him catching a a, a running back is? <laughs> an NFL running back. What do you mean catching him? Catching him from behind in the well, football game. No, no, I'm going to show you video footage right now. I said, this reminds me like, I mean, John so was a never... defensive lineman or an offensive lineman? Defensive lineman. You said offensive. Oh, no, defensive lineman. Dude, yeah, lineman, some... not linebacker. Lineman. No, no. Look at there's Hey, there is some, there is differences Josh, to him. I used to be damn fast. Yeah. Be, and it, people would be like, I don't yeah, see, you, I'm not now. <laughs> yeah. John, but you walk, you're the slowest fucking walker I know. At this one, there's no reason to get there fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I slunk now. This, but no, go ahead. There's some guys that are, you know, so damn fast. You know, even back when I was playing football, I ran a 4 8 40. Yeah. Which was for Four, a that's, big guy. That's fast for a big guy. That's pretty fast. There's yeah. guys doing them now. That are defensive linemen that are three hundred pounds. It's four sixes. That's so crazy. Man. I mean, they're flying. Yeah, this guy. Let me show you. I'm gonna show you guys this video. Here, turn the volume up. Um, 
There's the running back. There's the lineman. No, no, no. He <laughs> trucked him. Well, I'll tell you what. That is a fast man. Because and the whole thing is this. That man right there, the running back, is never going to live that down. But watch the stride on 94. Jeez, John. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if that big, I don't know if that big guy is, is making the team, but he is now. Oh, I guarantee you he's making the team. He's making the team you, now. You don't take a guy that's got that kind of speed away. And that kind of oh, heart no. to go chasing after him. A lot of guys yep. have just said, nah, he's gone. Yeah, no. I tell you who might not be making the team. <laughs> running back. <laughs> <laughs> running back. I think those those uh teammates of his, that running back's teammates, they're never gonna let him live it down. Oh god, no. And Do you I, know yeah. how many things are gonna end up in his chair no. or in his, his locker car room or, or his, yeah, as far his as the locker room. Yep. I mean, it's gonna be brutal. I mean, they're gonna make memes yeah. about him. Dude, they're gonna they're gonna fucking put they're gonna go out and they'll even buy little fucking those little scooter I carts. And shit, just so they can fucking say, hey, man, you needed this to speed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap us for today. Hope you guys enjoy this. It is 3 in the morning. We did this show for you guys. I want to thank you guys so much. Hit the subscribe button down below. Also, our links are down below. For BetUS, hit that link. 125% on your first three deposits of a bonus. 125% bonus on your first three deposits when you use our link. Also, make sure you guys shop Element with our link down below. Every... Uh, purchase you guys make um with the mixtures or even the sparkling now is that they will actually send you a bonus package of whatever their newest product is or sample packs uh, for you guys to have with no extra charge you get free stuff when you use our links down below hopefully you guys enjoy it john take us Here, away, i want to show you pure joy is my last thing okay because i actually posted this and i said when you learn you can fly you can do anything so there you go, man. Oh, that's so that, great, man. Dude, he, I've never seen a kid, man. I, I thought I was going to hurt his sides after a while. I kept on um, putting him down. He'd come back over, right? Man, the higher, the better. He was having so much fun. I just, that's awesome. I love that pick. He's just working with you around the farm. Yep. He was all oh, doing, he was help, helping me get, you know, do my house since I'm building my house. Careful how much you use them, man. You don't want someone to see you for child labor. Oh, hey, man. It's all about child labor, man. Yeah. Pay him. Uh, all right, guys. Well, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this show. And John, take us away, bud. Everybody out there, I hope you enjoyed the UFC fantastic fight between Duplessis and Adesanya. I hope you have a great Sunday. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone close to you and be good to people. And we will see you.